Alright guys, let's make a tower now using Grasshopper, a fully parametric tower that can twist and have floor slabs and everything. So, first thing I'm going to do is launch Rhino. And I'm going to pick this guy, Large Object Feet. So this will set my units to feet. And right there in the middle you can see Absolute Tolerance to 0 0.01. And then once I'm in here, I can launch Grasshopper because we're going to fully do this. So this is a new file. So if I double click here, there's nothing in here, right? No geometry or anything. So I'm going to launch Grasshopper now. And we're going to use Grasshopper to generate everything that we need for this tower. So I'm going to dock my Rhino to the left and dock Grasshopper to the right. So in order to do this, I need to first create a starting point that I can tell Grasshopper, okay, we're going to start here and start building things off of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is double click here. If you notice, if you try and type a command in Grasshopper, it'll start to type over here in Rhino. So so that, that doesn't happen, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to double click here and actually why did my thing stop working? Hang on one second. This guy should be running. So this will tell you what I'm pressing here. That looks pretty good. So Um, now, if I double click here, you'll see I can get this little search window. So I'm going to type in construct point. So I know that was the command I wanted. If I didn't know, you can also search, just type in point. If you know you want to create a point. And then see there's tons that pop up. There's so many that goes off the list here. So if you start looking through these different sets here, you have all these different options. So a point you'll find under the vector tab. And then here you have points. If you click this little black bar, it pops all of these guys out. So this is also the same guy we just picked. So these are little components. So now I have two. I can get them either way. It's just as valid. It works. So once you see, I created this, you'll see I get this little guy over here. But I can't actually pick him because he's a grasshopper preview. He's not actual geometry yet. So um, what you can do here, you can control the inputs and outputs of this individual component. So construct point, all it's going to do on the right, we have the output. It's going to create a point at a certain coordinates. You can tell it which coordinates to use here. So you have X, Y, and Z. So these are the inputs. If your component doesn't look like this, go here to display and make sure you, draw, you pick draw full names because it may look like that or even worse, it may look like this sometimes. I mean, some people like that, but if you're trying to learn and know what's going on, it's a little bit easier sometimes to have the full name. You can also always know what an input is looking for if you just highlight it and just put your mouse on it, you don't have to click or anything. Um, and then this will tell you kind of what it's waiting on or what it needs. Um, if I want to change, let's say, the x-coordinate, I can right-click here, set number, I can put 5, and then hit enter. So now my point is over here at 5. If I want to zoom in on that point, you can select the component that's generating that preview. Go to here where this little black box is and click down here and then use this guy, zoom on preview. So that will take your Rhino window straight to your grasshopper geometry. So when it's not picked, the preview right now, the default is red. Then when I pick it, it highlights green. So if I wanted to control this more fluidly, I could do like this. So I'm gonna double click here and create a number slider. So the number slider will allow you to kind of adjust these coordinates and move them on the fly kind of instead of just one at a time so 
if you click here on the right of it, you get this guy, right? And then you can plug this in to one of the inputs. And as long as it's good, this will stay gray and this will be gray. And you get a connection. So now if I move this guy back and forth and you look over here, you'll see that my guy's moving. So that's pretty good. Right now my max I can move is one and then I can go down to zero and I have three decimal places in between. So to change that, you can double click here on the actual word number slider. If you double click the number, it'll ask you to put in a number. So you can do like 0.555 if you want. Um, I'm gonna double click the name and then here you can change your maximum value. So I could put 20 and then my minimum value, I could put negative 20 and then say okay. And then now that same slider goes all the way from minus 20 to positive 20. You can see my little points like going all the way off the screen. So, um, that's good. The decimals are kind of, they're in there because of what we were using. So if I go back here, if I have this R, that means floating point numbers. So that means I can have like we're doing now 0.555. It doesn't have to be a whole number. This is how many decimal places you have. So if I pull this back to two, see that dropped? I went there, or I can go all the way up to six if I needed to. Um, N will make it only whole numbers. So as I move my slider, see here, this is basically moving your slider. It's only whole numbers or integer numbers. I'm gonna use this guy to, this is only even numbers and that's only odd numbers. So sometimes you could make use of those, but it's important to remember that you can change these settings on your number slider. Cause sometimes you want floating point numbers and sometimes if you set a definition to do something that should never be a decimal, um, you can use whole numbers so it knows, like, there's lots of times you could want that. Um, for example, you can never have, like, half of a parking spot. So if you needed it to calculate parking for you, you could use whole numbers only or make it round up. Um, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to create the base of my tower. So the base of my tower, I want to create a polygon. So that way I can add sides or remove sides and change the shape. So I'm going to type in, just like you would expect, polygon. And then this says create, always highlight kind of the options and read what they say. Sometimes one option will be better than another for what you're trying to do. Um, create a polygon with optional round edges. Okay, let's try that. So this is saying I can fill it the radius, that's the option, but I don't have to. Um, right now, as soon as I click that, it made this polygon over here. So if I pick it and tell it to zoom on preview, that's what I have here. So that's interesting because it's at zero, zero, zero. Why is it there? So if we go here and highlight plane, just put your mouse on it, it says one locally defined value, world X, Y. So that's just using the default XY plane as, the, as the, the direction to put this polygon and it uses the zero zero as the origin for the center point of this polygon. So why is it a hexagon? If we look, our number of segments is six and that's one locally defined value. Remember here, we locally defined the X to five. On here we put the number slider so it's one value inherited. It doesn't say locally defined. So you'll always have a default value for these things and it'll say locally defined. That means it's within here. So you could change it on here. Just like these ones, I could right click here, set integer. See here, it won't let me do floating point numbers. It's an integer, it has to be a whole number. Um, I could put nine, commit changes, and now I have nine sides. But uh, what I would like to do is set this up to a number slider like this. So um, first I'm going to try and make a number slider, but I'm going to show you a quick trick. So instead of having to create the number slider like this, number slider, and now if I wanted to change that, um, I would have to right click it or go to edit or double click it and go here and change all these values. So instead of that, I want just immediately to be able to have a number slider at certain integers or what I want with different range than just zero to one. So if you double click, instead of typing number slider, type kind of a value that's in the range of what you want. So if I want it up to like 10, 
sides or yeah so let's say up to 10 so I could write 10 and see it knows I'm trying to make a number slider and then if I want whole numbers only I can leave it as 10 if I need two decimal places I could put 0 0.00 and then now it'll create a number slider like this so it goes up to 10 and then it has two decimal places already so that's pretty helpful because it saves you a little bit of time so here I could put that on radius and then I'm going to be sliding that back and forth right I can also create a number slider let's put 10 here and this one I didn't put 10.00 so look at the difference this one is has decimals two of them if I zoom in here this guy does not it'll only go to whole numbers which is fine for the number of segments we have so we can plug that guy in and as I change this you can go down and then uh oh we've got an error so this is what that means that's a warning it doesn't mean it's totally fail it'll turn bright red if it fails but this is telling you something's wrong and if you look it gives you a little window and if you just put your mouse on it it'll tell you a polygon must have at least three sides so if we look number of sides we told it two and it can't do that so you have to have at least three so always remember that and then if it's something like this that it should always be above a certain number I can set here my minimum to be three and then now I can never accidentally go too low so a triangle is the least and you can go as much as you want it'll get closer and closer to a circle so for now let's put like six sides or however we want we'll try pentagon um so we've got this guy here and but if you notice we're not we want to center it here so that when i move this guy it moves my polygon i want it centered on this point so the plane that's where it's where you're basically putting the base so if i grab this point we created and plug this into here you'll see that guy jumps here and then now if i move this guy it's also going to move my polygon and right now i'm only controlling the y but i could also control with the same number slider i could put this into here so now i'm controlling two different things with one slider you could also make a slider here, a different slider here, and then control them independently. So uh, easy way to do that, you can pick this guy, hit control C, and then control V to paste it. And then I can move that independently of this. So now that we've made the base, let's copy our base upwards a certain amount and then I'll have the bottom and the top of my tower and then I'm gonna loft those so the next step is to make the copy and move it up so in grasshopper whenever you make a copy you can you can if you remember that it's always going to have history so this point still exists even though I'm really working on this now there's still a history here of this point so when I make a copy or move this I'm not actually going to move the base I'll move this but it's gonna make a new copy of it up here somewhere so if I type in move I'll use this translate move an object along a vector so that's good so for my geometry it wants an, a geometry so I can bring this polygon here one locally defined value so I can put that there now if you look it's made this copy and it's gone upwards and so the motion here is one locally defined value 0 0 10 so that's just telling me it's moved it 10 units vertically so if I want to control that I would have to tell it obviously it's going in the right direction so let's see if I can put a number slider to control it let's see what happens so if I put 20.00 so I get some decimal points and plug this in look what happened okay I get a big error so it's red that's really bad so what's that saying one value inherited from one source null it means you can't even read what this is so if we disconnect this so if you hold control and then bring this back you can disconnect 
So it's working there because it wants a vector, not a number. So it needs a direction. So I need to tell it to go in the Z direction. So if you type in unit Z, this guy is one vector parallel to the world Z axis. So that's really what you want to be using for this part. So I've got this guy now and then I've got here. So how do I use these? So if I plug that into there, see it immediately goes down to one because if I look, it's inheriting one value from one source, zero, zero, one. If I go here, unit vector, that's what that is. And then the factor, one locally defined value is just one. So, but it also has me input. So if I bring this into here, I can move this guy here. And then I've got that. So now I have control of my copy. So that's good. So next thing I'm going to do is create a loft. So if I type in loft, this wants curves. And then I have options I can define if I want to change the options. And then it will create a loft, the resulting loft surface. So for curves, it needs which curves I want to use. So obviously I want to use this guy, right? And then I want to also plug in this one, which was the first one, the base one here. So if I grab from here and plug into here, what happens? So if you look, it's going to kick this guy off. So it only likes having one plugged in at a time, but I need to tell it to use two. So how do I do this? The way to do it is you hold shift. You can plug the first one in, no problem. But in order for it to know that you want multiple ones in here, you have to hold shift and click. So now that I have that, I have my loft. So if I move around here, you can see that's my loft. And this is live now. So if I come back, change the number of segments, add more, you can see it's still actually lofting the result. So I can add here now, if I wanted to move it, I can move this and all of my commands that I've done up to now are still good, right? So here I have the move command, so I can move this guy less or more depending on what I want to do. Um, now I'm going to come over here. If I click my loft and zoom in on my loft using the zoom preview, that's good. So what if I wanted to now rotate the top as it goes up? So I have a twisting tower instead of just straight extrusion like this. So that's pretty easy. You just have to think about what do I need to rotate? So if we realize that we can grab this guy, the geometry that we've moved up to right now see I picked it but you don't really see it highlighted that's because I have a lot of previews on top of each other so sometimes in um, Grasshopper you'll have to turn off previews of certain things because everything's creating a preview and sometimes you only needed it to create part of your step so um, if you right click on anything you can turn off the preview here and then now if I click this, you can see it's highlighted. So I hadn't lost it. It was just this preview was in the way of me being able to see that this was selected. Sometimes if you zoom in really close, you can see it. Um, so another way you can do it is you can hit the space bar and then you get this. So that's using space bar. And then that turns my preview on. This guy turns it off. So there you go. Um, now. I want to rotate this guy. So how could I do that? So I know I'm creating him here. So I haven't disabled my loft. It's still lofting, but I just turned off the preview, right? So I could leave it on. So what I want to do is rotate here. So if I put in rotate, I get this one, rotate an object in a plane, and it's rotating it like this. So I think that's pretty good. I'm going to try this. So. I'm going to plug this geometry into there, and you can see it rotated it, but it's also kind of like shifted it more than anything. It just pushed it to the side. So why is that? So you always want to kind of figure out what's going on. So it's inheriting my geometry, which is right, and then the angle, it's right now in 0.5 times pi, so it's in radians, rotation angle and radians. If you want to change that, you can right-click 
and then um, change this to degrees. So now it's the angle is in degrees. Um, the default value is 0.5 times pi, but here I can put in a number slider, right? I know it's going to go to like 360 would be my max. So let's see, 200, and then so that goes way past it. So I could double click here, make my maximum 360. So that would be one full rotation. Uh, and I could plug this into here. And I don't have any, so see, we can see it's rotating, but not in the center of where I want it to be. It's kind of going around something. So if I want it to rotate in place, how can I do that? So what I'm going to do is tell it, you know what? I don't want to just rotate it. I need to tell it where to rotate from. So if you grab geometry, let's see if this will work. We can plug that in. And now when I rotate it, it's going about one point. So see, that's not going to work. That's not what we want. We want the center point, not just one point on there. So sometimes you have to add another little component in order to get kind of what some of these guys want. I'm going to just quickly change this so that my degrees can have decimals. So there, it's a little smoother. Um, I don't want this here because that's not giving me what I want. So I'm going to disconnect that guy. You can also do this. Let's say we had these connected. Right click on here and say disconnect move. And see so it'll turn red. Um, so now what I want to do is pull up this component that's called area. So this guy will give me the area of a geometry and also the center, which is like the center point. So that's what I really want. I want to rotate this about that guy. So I'm going to put that there, and then the centroid will go to plane. So now if you look, it's made this point right in the middle. So if I zoom back out here, this guy is ready to go. So as I rotate this now, it's actually doing it in the correct spot. But my loft, see, it's still doing the old loft. So why is that? That's because we're controlling the loft off the old geometry. So we've made new geometry here. So if I just grab this, right click on curves and tell it disconnect the moved polygon, because this is our original polygon. So if I zoom out, you can always see kind of where these guys are pointing to. We want to disconnect this one, keep that one. So right click, disconnect, move. That's the one, not this one, it's this one. Boom. So now we disconnected it, it has gone away because it's only got one thing in here. So I'm going to grab this guy. Remember, hold shift. And then you can plug him in. And now it's like, what happened? Whoa. We got this crazy thing. So I'm going to go back here to my angle and adjust my angle so it's not as severe. And then now as it goes up, it's twisting. So I've got that. That's pretty cool. If I wanted to also scale as I went up, I could throw in a scale um, component either before or after either of these, the rotate or um, I could scale and then rotate or rotate and then scale. So let's scale it after I've rotated it. So I can type in scale. And then I can grab here this geometry. And then I want to use this center. And then if I throw in a factor, so I know I'm not going to try and scale it bigger or not much more than twice. So I could put like 1.00. So this will just let me shrink the top. I can't actually grow it because I'm scaling by a factor that's smaller. So if you look up here, I'm shrinking it down. So I can shrink the top. If I wanted to grow the top, I would just have to change this so that it can go over one. So maybe the max could be two. And then now that I've done that, I can actually grow it out as well. So let's see what that does once I, and look, that's after it's been rotated. So see, it also rotates, but my loft isn't growing because remember our loft is coming in off of this. So I need to disconnect this guy. I'm going to do it the 
manual way there and then pull him in instead hold shift and then now as I scale that guy I see my loft scales and then I can still control the rotation here and it updates if I wanted to create in the other direction I can expand my minimum to be minus oops minus 360 and then now fully flip in different directions so that's up to you how much you want to rotate it or you're gonna get crazy with it or not as crazy and then the scale is running off of this guy scale So real quick, we have a bunch of extra circles up here I don't want to see. So if I click this, look, I in reality only need to see this guy and then the one way back. So this guy, see he's highlighted up here. I don't need him. So I'm going to right click and turn off the preview. And then notice how he turned a darker gray. That means the preview is off. If I bring the preview back, it's light gray and I'm going to go here to start gray over here it just disappears so that's important if you ever see this you're wondering why it's not showing up it's because you turned off the preview somehow this guy is the other one I don't want to see so I'm going to turn him off you can also do this if you remember hover your mouse hit space bar and then you have control here so pick your guy turn off pick it turn on space bar you have all these other options too. Turn it off. So now I've got this. Here's my full definition. I'll full size this. Or try to. So if we remember, we started here, construct point. We went into polygon. Here we're controlling how many how big the radius is and how many edges we have. Then what we did is we've moved it upwards effect in the z direction with this number controlling it um, a really good habit to get into um, I'm gonna hold alt here and get some space move this you can group these and add what's called a scribble um, so if I double click and type scribble I can label my stuff so I know what it is so this I'm gonna say is the starting point And you can right click and say group so there's my starting point these guys here all kind of work together and you can use these to align to these little arrows if you wanted to try those um, so if I got all of these guys and hit this it would align them all to the top if I can actually grab them here which these overlap now so I don't want that undo So I've got these guys, I can group these or can make my scribble, let's see. This is the base shape. And this is good in case you open this up like and a year or two months from now, you don't remember what you were doing, and you're like wondering. So, so this is simple, so it's pretty easy, but if it was complicated, you may want to, or if someone else needs to use your file, those are really helpful. If they're just simple descriptions like this, they help a lot. Um, if you want to add space here to make a little bit of room, you can hold Alt and then click here, and it'll give you more space. Um, and hold Shift to pick these move this here and then scribble on here um, this creates the height of my tower so you could say height because this is where I'll control the height so that guy's gonna always control how tall my tower is
over here. So I'm kind of grouping these in the order that I would need to, if I wanted to say, hey, I need to change the width of my tower or something like that, then I would know where to go. Um, so here, I've got this guy. I'll try and make it so that these are a little easier for you to read. Okay, so these are rotating, and then this is scaling. So I'm going to move this. That guy's kind of on his own. He's just getting us the center and stuff. So move him there. This guy is kind of his own thing. So he's just giving us the centroid. This is the rotation. This is the scale of the top piece. So we could technically consider these two separate things. So that, do a scribble. This is the tower's rotation. Oops. Group. And then these guys here are, so that's just the final loft. You can also do this. I could grab that guy, hit Control C and Control V. And then, well, normally it does. Didn't like it that time. Um, scribble. And then this will be the tapering or the, the yeah, I guess that's a good way. Scaling of the top. That's what I'll put there. Yeah. So, because it doesn't have to taper in, it could taper out or taper in or either way. Group. That guy's good. So now we have a starting point, the base shape, the height that we're, we're copying him up. The amount of rotation, this is just getting us the center point. So this we're just kind of using to get, so this we could just write a scribble here. This is the center point of the top. So you can group those. So I'm going to hit space bar to do this one. Let's see. Ah, it doesn't like it. I think something's messing up with my keys. Um, okay, so we've got this, and then this is just the resulting loft. So that's just loft, so I'm not going to really do anything to it until we add anything. So this is looking good. Now we've got that, and we can go here quickly and say, hey, I wanted to change the height of my tower. Like, it's too short. I need it to be taller. So I can quickly come over here and say, oh, yeah, the height. Or, oh man, it's twisting, not enough, I want more twisting tower rotation. So, or maybe you think there's not enough sides, because you like more sides. So, you can come here to the base shape and number of sides. Less sides, or more sides. And we can change that guy's maximum to like 20. You can get lots of little sides. So now that we have this, what if we want to make columns or, or floors? Like how we make the slabs? So let's start with the slabs because that way we can start to make it look like a real tower instead of just a shell. So I've got most of the hard work done. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to take this loft and I need to use the contour command to go vertically and cut slices across this like boom 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 and then whatever distance I tell it that would be equivalent to my floor to floor height right so if I zoom in here to the loft I'm going to search up the contour command contour create a set of curve contours so I'm going to click that it comes out orange he's not happy he's a little grumpy because he doesn't have anything so the curve Wait, let me make sure. I don't want... No, that's not the one, is it? No, he doesn't like that. This is the wrong contour. Delete this guy. He won't let me delete. Maybe it's because I have this thing on. So, normally that works. But you can always go to edit, delete. 
Um, I have loft. I want to contour this. So type in contour. We were using that one, which is to contour a curve. I want to contour a shape, or here it says a brep or a boundary representation. If I click that and see what's coming out of here, it says one locally defined open brep or boundary representation. So this is looking for one, a brep, and this is giving us a brep. So that's how you should always know that you've got the right guy to work together here. So now the point, that's the base point that I want to start at, which if you remember, where do we start at? What was our base point that we started at? It was way over here. So I'm going to move this down. This point, the starting point. So I can grab here and scroll over there. That's the base point. So direction, I want to go in the Z direction. And then distance, I want to set that. So if I want to go into the Z, I'm going to type unit Z, right? And then the distance, until I have that, it won't actually create the contours. So I'm going to put in, this is at technically how far apart the cut, cuts are. So think about it as like your floor to floor height. So what would your floor to floor heights be? That's how big you should make your number slider. So let's try like 15. I'm going to do 0, 0, so I have some decimals in there. And then, remember, my units are in feet, because when we opened Rhino, it's large object feet. So distance there. So now if I look, I have three cuts. And then if I move this up, I have less. If I move it down, I'll have more, right? So right there, I have seven foot, almost eight foot, floors so if I wanted something more realistic maybe 15 you can also double click and type an exact number 15 well oh so for some reason my rhino command opened up oh that might be why none of my stuff was working I don't know what's going on here but you normally can type one I don't know he doesn't like it, so I'm going to stop. Um, it could be this guy I have that's telling you what keys I'm pushing for the video. So hopefully when you try it, it works pretty good. So if I wanted more height on my tower, I only have a two-story tower, I can move this guy here. And you'll see that as it goes up, as long as it's big enough, it will add more cuts at that distance. And then now I can come here to my base shape. In my radius, I can grow that. So we've got this guy. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I've got that. Let's go ahead and try and give our floors thickness. Because if I turn off the loft. Yeah, see. Oh, I think um, something's messing up my keys. If I turn off the preview here, I've just got little rings. I don't actually have floors yet. So I need to extrude these or make it a surface and then extrude it or extrude it and then cap it. So I'm going to try extruding it just as is. So I'm going to grab these. See, there's my contours. And I'm going to type in um, extrude. So extrude curves and surfaces along a vector. That sounds pretty good. So I've got this guy. I put that in. And then direction, I'm going to say in the Z direction, unit Z direction. So awesome. We got that. Now, if I bring my loft back, let's see what happened. So we've got the sh the rings right whenever you see that like weird jaggedy stuff that's just telling you that two previews are overlapping in the same spot um that's no big deal you can turn one off if you don't want to see it now what i want to do is give those the actual like place where you could stand if that was an actual floor right now they're just like rings right so if i want to fill those in i can run the cap command so no not cap holes one two is that what it is? Let me see. Delete. Cap. 
I guess it is. The regular cap is called cap hole, so let's put it in. And there you go. So if you look, this is still there though. See? So we have the full enclosed guy, and then we also have the rings. So I don't need to see these anymore. So I'm gonna turn off that preview. And then now, if I wanted to control how far it's extruding, right now it's just going one. I can put a number slider here on this factor. So like, let's think about what would I need? I could possibly have 20 foot thick floors. So I don't need to go that big. I could put like three or five even. That could be total height if you needed of your floor. So if I do this, boom, I'll have five thick foot thick floors, but I don't need that. So I can go here. You could also say you want to be able to control this. So I want two decimals. And then I have more control here. So that looks pretty good to me. I can bring this back. Preview. So now I've got this starting to look decent. Let's get some columns. So see here, here's like a hint of how you could th start to think about the columns. We can subdivide those curves that we started with, the polygon here and the polygon there, and then subdivide it so that we have points along those curves. And then we can have points on the bottom, points on the top. We could create a line that connects one point to the next point up here, and then you'll have at least the path where all the columns should go. Once you have that, you could then say, hey, I want to create actual thickness for my column. So I could use a pipe command, you could use an extrude command if you want to do a different profile. But for this, we'll just use pipe since that would be pretty easy. So in order to do this, I need to divide these curves that I made at the beginning and at the end. Because all these going through, it should follow along it as long as I have the top and bottom one. So I'm going to come back to the beginning where I have my first base shape. So that was this guy. And then I'm going to come under here and type in divide curve. That's this guy. The curve I want to divide is him, the base shape, the initial one. So see, it's created these little points down here now. So that's really good. It's divided into equal segments. But if you look, it doesn't actually line up with my edges. So what if I want it to line up with my edges? My count, I would want to grab off of, see here, I have segments. So I have a number of segments here. I can try and grab this. Let's see what that does. So we're using 14. Let's also plug that into here. So now I have the same amount. So I have one column on every corner, right? Or one point where each column could start. So for now, let's keep that. Let's see how that works. The next thing I would want to do is divide the top one and say, hey, I want to divide that guy too. So let's go up and figure out which one we need to grab. I want to grab the top one up here that's rotated and the scaled because I can be controlling that. So what's going into the loft, this guy. So let's see what happens if I plug that into here. Hold shift. It also creates points. So what do I do with these points? I have a bunch of points, right? Uh, if you want to see what's coming out, you can create what's called a panel. And then plug that in. And then this doesn't actually do anything except just show you kind of what's coming out. So what I want to do is different from what's here. So um, I want to delete this guy. I don't want to plug that into there because when I go to do my next part, line, I don't want this one. If you ever see this hexagon, that means it's referencing like something else, like another geometry or something. It's just a collection of lines. It's not actually making a line for you. So these could be coming from Rhino or somewhere else. This is the one I would want, line between two points. So if I click that guy, see it needs start and end. 
but I only have points coming out of here. And once you do that, um, let's see, did it work? Let's turn this preview off. So I'm not seeing the lines that it should be making. It doesn't really work that way. So later on, I'll show you guys how to do a list to start to control that. And you could do it right here. But for now, let's not worry about that. I'm going to disconnect the scaled one. And then I'm going to make a new divide curve, just like we did before, here. So that the points of this will be the end point. This will also come from there. But instead of having that curve, I'm going to pull this curve. So here's this one scaling the top. So now look at that. We've got our points. So that's really good. If I wanted to give those thickness, and here's what's nice, as I rotate my tower or stretch it or change anything, those go along with it because, remember, it has history. So as you do so, and see, like our floors pop in as we hit the right size, boom, 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 boom. So that makes it really easy to kind of keep working on stuff and making changes down the line as fully parametric. I want to create the thickness for these, so I'm going to use a pipe command. So here's my lines, and the default thickness is huge. So my radius, what is my radius? One. So one foot. So I have two foot thick columns. So that might be fine in real world, but since we have a tiny little tower, maybe that's like too big. So we could make our base bigger, or there's lots of ways you could fix this. Um, so let's say I want a smaller radius here. So I can type in a number slider, maybe 1.00. And then plug that in and start to bring that down. So if you watch, now my columns are getting much narrower. But they actually have thickness now. So if I zoom in, that's what they look like. They're tubes. Um, you could then cap those if you wanted to, to give them um, caps this is really cool because you can see zero is no cap if I change this value to one they'll have a cap so if I right click it to find um, oh here you just have the checks so flat so see now I added there or I could give it round now I have like little round tops so if I zoom those guys little rounded tops. I don't know. It's up to you. Sometimes you want rounded ones. These ones I'll do flat. So that's nice that the pipe does that. Um, if we come over here, we still have our base there. And now I can bring back my loft preview and zoom out here. And that's basically the whole thing that we did in class last week. So there you go, fully parametric tower. Um, you can come in here, adjust all these things. This is my floor thickness. It'll keep going. You could give it a negative direction if you wanted them to go down. Um, this is the floor to floor heights, so you can get more or less floors. Uh, I'm going to change my preview over here from low quality to high makes it a little smoother um, makes it run a little slower but it'll have smoother kind of things this is the scaling of the top so if I wanted to get bigger as it went up or vice versa you would control that here and notice how everything is updating as we go there is nothing I have all these little dots that's coming from down here so if I don't want to see them you just click here preview turn it off click here previews off have my old initial points. I think this guy's making a preview I don't need. He's making a preview I don't need anymore. So now we're seeing less things. And you can change, let's see if this does anything shaded here. 
you can also change here the quality so um, this can apply materials so different looks of your preview right now we're using this like red and stuff so you can change individual things so I could say my glass should show blue and different things like that um, for now don't worry about it um, you can do wireframe no previews at all if you need to just move fast and this obviously controls the quality um, this guy is only preview for what you selected so there when I pick it it'll show it so that's pretty helpful too so that's kind of the guy and it's just an intro to kind of grasshopper but you can quickly see how you can start to create something really complicated and still remain in full control all the way to the end and add more so if I for example if I wanted now two columns per side how could I do that right now I'm dividing the curves the same amount right so number of segments 14 say I want 28 columns it's really easy if you think about it it's just math so I could type in um, multiply multiplication I have a times B equals this so I would just put here a number slider oops I'm gonna use whole numbers um, times and then let's set this up to 5 for the max so if I want times 2 I could put here 2 I can grab that number into here and then use this as the count for both of these so now as I change this my columns always have a middle column along each side whereas before we were only on the very edge so the hardest part in grasshopper is kind of thinking of what you want it to do and it's not really the actual command the actual command is usually very simple like this um, but thinking of what to do is where the hard part comes so you really got to think about it outside the box kind of what exactly are you doing because parametric is different than like direct modeling where you can just click it and adjust it um, you got to kind of think about really oh, okay if I was going to model this I would have to click here then click there and then I would be able to create it so I hope this was helpful um, I plan on making more of these videos as we keep going so take a look at this take notes repeat it whenever you want or pull pieces from it so if you want to do like one of these things for another project you're working on and you say hey this is how we did it in this instance maybe I can apply that to something else that's usually how you'll learn the most so um, okay that's all I got for now I'll make this full screen for the end